Howdy folks, my name is Will Watson and I'll be doing the uh, public forum topic analysis for Resolve. The United States federal government should ban the collection of personal data through biometric recognition technology. A uh, special thank you to Champion Briefs for letting me do this video. My background is I have a master's in international affairs from the Bush School of Government and Public Service and I got my bachelor's in international studies with a minor in Russian from Texas A&M University. During my master's program, I was fortunate enough to study under a lot of intelligence and law enforcement practitioners, so I really like looking at these sort of surveillance topics. Additionally, one of my first uh, topics as a debater had to deal with government surveillance, so I'm really happy to be able to talk to you all about this today. Um, today we're going to do three things. We're going to look at framing the topic, then we're going to analyze the pro and con, the pro and the con arguments, concluding with what I think rounds are going to look like for the topic. So let's dive straight into it. Um, this topic is missing a few words, in my opinion. Um, I think that it is going to be incredibly broad, and so we're going to need some definitions to help narrow the ground for both sides in order to keep this a fair debate and make it so people aren't just flipping for one side in every single coin flip. Um, so let's start with some definitions. The first word that I think we need to define is biometric recognition. Um, because biometric recognition is going to be pretty broad. Uh, according to ITU, uh, the Technology Watch Report in December of 2009, biometric recognition can be described as automated methods to accurately recognize individuals based on distinguishing physiological and or behavioral traits. And if you think about that, that's really broad. Um, the article goes on to talk about facial recognition, fingerprints, um, iris, uh, your voice, um, and other distinguishing physiological characteristics. Um, but let's put this in the context of biometric recognition technology. Um, uh, according to uh, Zayul Chowdhury um, in their paper, biometric, uh, biometric Security Based on Face Recognition, the biometric recognition technology consists of four main modules. First, a sensor that captures samples of a biometric trait. Second, feature extraction module that extracts certain salient features of the biometric sample captured by the sensor uh, at a system database. The features uh, extracted by the feature extraction module and a matcher module that equalizes the features extracted from the biometric samples with the features stored in the system database. And I really like putting these two definitions together because Chowdhury's definition of biometric recognition technology shows that this is a multi-part system. That's really important because it's not enough for us to say that because there's facial recognition that this is facial recognition technology. Um, it has to go ahead and do that matching. Um, but I think we're still going to see some pretty broad definitions on the topic. This is one of those where if you're able to talk with your opponent before the round, I would really recommend it to make sure that you're not going to spend your entire round embedded in a topicality debate, unless that's just what you want to do for this round. Meta debates are important. If you decide to go into the legal system, a significant portion of, or specifically if you want to go into the appellate court of the legal system, you're going to be arguing about definitions and you're going to be arguing about past precedent. If you want to make that top, this topic about topicality, that is entirely your prerogative. Um, I, I mentioned at the beginning some words are missing here. Um, here's some of the ones I think that would have improved this topic that you should consider in your round. First, it doesn't give a location. It just says the United States federal government should ban, not where the ban should occur. It's a little bit implied, it's in the United States, but you could argue that the US is trying to do a global mandate here, or perhaps more within the realm of possibility, this wouldn't just apply to domestic agencies, this would apply to agencies acting abroad. Um, our military uses um, biometric recognition technology, so do a lot of our international intelligence agencies. Um, I really think that trying to narrow down where you believe the topic would occur and having some sound justification for why you believe that will help give you a better round. Um, another word I think is missing is either the word private or the word public because there is private and public collection um, of biometric recognition technology or excuse me of personal data uh, through biometric recognition technology. Um, 
For example, I know that certain businesses use Face IDs. I log on to my phone with Face IDs and I log on to my computer with my fingerprint. Um, and there are some important Fourth Amendment implications to these things that we're going to talk a little bit about. But the final word I want to look at is personal data, which brings us to the Fourth Amendment implications. Um, personal data uh, is data that, frankly, you don't tend to share um, with a lot of people or data that is particular to yourself. And this is where we get into some tricky gray lines because courts have had different rulings on what personal information is. Um, according to a court case, Katz versus the United States, um, we look at the reasonability test for whether or not something is private. Um, that is, if an individual has taken steps to make something private, something is more private and would typically require a warrant. Uh, for example, where it, if something is inside your house, uh, police generally, generally need a warrant to get it. But if police see me do illegal activity as I'm walking down the street in full public view, you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy whenever you're walking down the street. In a similar vein, um, when police have wanted to get into individuals' phones, some courts in this country have ruled that police are able to warrantlessly get into someone's phone using their face because you present your face uh, to other people. Um, to that question, while I would generally assume that your face and your fingerprint um, are personal data collected through biometric recognition technology, one could argue that those are just publicly available. Um, a lot of y'all have social media and post, maybe not your fingerprint, but your face uh, everywhere you go, and you put your fingerprint on a lot of the things you touch, uh, unless you just wear gloves everywhere. So the wording in this topic gives us a lot to think about and gives us a lot for debaters to consider uh, before diving into the topic. Um, so I really recommend you spend some time doing two things. One, learning the history of biometric recognition technology. History will always help you in a debate round. The person who is smartest and knows the most will win the round. Whether that's knowing the most about persuasion or knowing the most about the topic, the person who knows the most will win the round. But the second thing you should do is look at the Fourth Amendment background. I began by having my students read through Fourth Amendment cases because knowing the overall context of surveillance is really important to being able to dive deep on this topic. But let's go into the pro and the con. With these and trying to dive deep and find the unique arguments, I honestly found that a lot of your stock issue arguments are going to be impacted well enough that you're going to be able to win rounds on them without having to get overly complex. That's what you want on a topic like this. Um, if I was debating this topic, I would have an incredibly complex topicality file that analyzes each individual word and gives uh, education um, and fairness reasons and why these uh, standards matter to make into voters. I would go deep into topicality. And if you have any friends in public forum or, or excuse me, policy debate or Lincoln Douglas debate, they're probably very accustomed to this sort of topicality debate. But I would pair that with simple contentions because a lot of your rounds may not be won on the impact level here. They may be won in the meta debate level. Um, so on the pro, uh, many authors have written regarding the security or excuse me, the privacy concerns that this uh, surveillance could do. The, the collection of personal data could, through biometric recognition technology, especially uh, as Chowdhury talks about with the automation um, and the ITU has talked about using automated methods, could be a vast invasion of your privacy. Um, again, reading the Fourth Amendment cases helps you define what privacy is in the United States, but there are concerns both at the uh, public level that the government is surveilling you, um, and there's concerns at the private level, what could a private company do with all of your data? And that gets into two different fields. First is um, the... Uh, the field of over-surveillance. And there's a lot of great authors who have written on the impacts of surveillance. I recommend you go back uh, to Jeremy Bentham, uh, Bentham and Foucault um, and look at the Panopticon and really dive into the philosophy of this if you want to look um, especially at government surveillance, but at private surveillance researching surveillance capitalism and what sort of market the private sector um, has created here. 
but it's not a straight line, it's a dotted line because private companies can sell data to public entities. So keep that in mind as you're researching the topic. Um, the second pro argument I wanna talk about is the impact on minority communities and over-policing, that biometric recognition technology and the collection of personal data um, can create according to some authors and some localities. Um, uh, Alex Najibib uh, writes on this in their article titled Facial Recognition Technology um, and describes how facial recognition technology disproportionately impacts minority communities. I recommend diving deep into this argument and learning more about the history of uh, surveillance on minority communities because there is a deep history here. Um, some cities, I believe San Francisco, um, along with others, have actually banned some forms of biometric recognition technology. Um, excuse me, the Alex Nabib article is Racial Discrimination in Face Recognition Technology. Um, if any of y'all need to go ahead and Google it real quick. But looking into why Boston and San Francisco have banned facial recognition technology by the police may give you some insight on why the whole government should ban this. Um, I want to look at some easily tangible impacts because with privacy concerns and arguments impacting minority communities that hit at a very real level. Um, I don't want to discount the real level that both these, um, both these arguments hit at. Um, it becomes more difficult to quantify. What can you quantify a lack of privacy as? Um, it, it helps to have an impact that has a clear number. Um, so one impact could be the, the cost of such systems impacts businesses. Um, just talking about this from a balance sheet perspective that, hey, these systems cost too much to maintain, cost too much to build, it's easier using a lock and a key. Um, I think that that can be a powerful argument that just it slows down growth. You can especially impact to oncoming recessions. I think that would go well with some of these other arguments that will have big impacts that are hard to make tangible and hard to quantify. Um, especially sometimes your judge pool may not be as receptive to privacy concerns or frankly, unfortunately, the impact on minority communities. You have some judges who aren't as receptive to those arguments as they will be to hard numbers. Um, but well, the final argument I wanna talk about on the pro is the issue with accuracy. These systems aren't perfect yet, especially from an automation perspective. Talking about how there may be some problems with the accuracy right now uh, can help your arguments and give you some defense against the con arguments, which we're gonna move into now. With con arguments, I didn't see a lot of breadth with con arguments, but there is some depth. Um, many authors have written regarding um, that biometric recognition technology gives increased efficiency to law enforcement, um, our intelligence agencies, and just national defense as a whole. That biometric recognition technology, as the ITU described it, looks at physiological and behavioral traits. Um, this can give you some indicators of what people are thinking and what people are doing. For example, gait analysis, the way you walk, uh, has been shown to uh, describe your motivation um, are you just casually walking around the street or are you uh, determined and on a mission? That's really important for domestic security. Um, one thing I want to note here is that while this con argument may seem pretty broad and encompassing, there can be some alternate solvency here. We can talk about how other methods can solve for a lot of the stuff that um, biometric recognition technology can solve. Um, then the one other argument I want to talk about on the con, because I really think y'all are going to be able to write many different contentions based on this first argument of increased efficiency, is federalism and state issues. The, the federal government doing this ban may supersede the states. Um, I think that that's a powerful argument that a lot of people ignore, but it's not easily quantifiable. So again, I say pair a broad argument with a big impact with a small argument that's easily quantifiable, and I think you have a strong case, especially since I think this debate is coming down to topicality. Um, let's look at how I think the rounds will play out. I think that the con is going to walk in feeling like they have an advantage. 
because the con will have clear impacts to national security, law enforcement, and very policy impacts. I think the pro is going to be able to win uh, by talking about specific privacy concerns and probably win on turns on the con flow. It'll be interesting, but I can see pros kicking uh, the constructive uh, after, after the second speech because you're able to turn some of the increased efficiency arguments with a lack of accuracy, <clears throat> excuse me, plus what's called a self-fulfilling prophecy, where if you treat people like criminals, they become criminals. These arguments will help the pro win the round, but not on case. Additionally, strong topicality arguments. If the pro wants to restrict the con's ground by narrowing what biometric recognition technology is, that is, the, that is the pro's prerogative. The con can do the same, but I see it more as the pro because restricting the ground, I think, will help the pro a lot more. Where if we're just talking about facial recognition technology, this debate becomes much more skewed to the side of the pro. But if we're talking about fingerprints, that's where the con gets to say, imagine law enforcement loses the ability to automate their fingerprints process, where your fingerprints are searched through databases. But there's a lot of arguments for both sides here. Um, I really look forward to watching some of these debates and wish you all the best of luck. Everyone take care, stay safe, and have a great day.